My name is Pete Meesey, I'm CEO of a company called Radtac. Uh, the relationship with the BCS is we've written a Agile Foundations book. Um, yeah, so I worked with the BCS, I used to be actually part of the BCS Agile Committee. So a long, a long history with, uh, with BCS, yeah. I'm talking to you today because we've got the Agile Foundations book coming out. What is Agile all about? Um, interesting question. Uh, th I suppose the fundamental uh, thing that Agile enables for us is delivery of value to the customer um, as often as possible. So there's lots of other things that Agile will do for you, like typically Agile is going to be more productive, typically. Typically you're going to get higher productivity, typically you're going to get higher quality, these sorts of things. But largely what it's really about is getting value out to the customer um, on a when needed basis. And by customer you mean? Customer is going to be whoever uses the particular product you're, you're delivering with the Agile approach. So an IT system for example, rather than um, having uh, a very big batch size as it's called, so notice, rather than having a large project or a program or whatever it is and having to wait six months, two years, four years, whatever, get things out every two weeks where it is feasible to do so. So what you're trying to do is actually um, get small features of value, um, get those features out so the customer can start using them. Obviously that then leads you to basically just self-funding delivery, if you can do it. Um, and that's, that's the main focus. But I say there's all sorts of things that Agile will also do for us as well. Uh, helping the team become more, more efficient, helping the team become happier because they can actually deliver things. Um, all sorts of things. But that's the main focus. In an organisation, does it sit in the IT team? Um, in a simple organisation, Agile would normally sit in the information technology team. Now, now interestingly, um, there's loads of approaches out there. Kanban, example of uh, arguably an Agile approach, yeah? It's certainly thought about in the Agile sphere. Scrum, an example of another Agile approach. They're not actually information technology approaches, these two. They're actually product, well, Scrum is a product development approach. Kanban is really a change approach. So, you know, some of the Agile approaches, extreme programming, yep, that's specific for the information technology team. I would say as of 2015, yeah, largely, if you're talking Agile, it's largely an information technology department. Why? Agile suited to very variable environments where things change all the time. Things change all the time in IT. So this is why Agile's used there, but it's going out to all sorts of other areas now, marketing, business change, all sorts of things. So for me, in the last, I'd say, two years, Agile has become one of the words that I hear most banded around the office. Why do you think has there been this sudden surge in popularity of the term? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a great question. I mean, if, if you, we have in the book that we're, uh, we're going to be launching, um, basically the history of Agile. You know, you can trace Agile back to some of the ideas from the Toyota production system, 1947. Um, you know, is Agile lean? No. Is Agile based on a number of lean product development principles? Yes. So if you then go from 1947 through, you know, the history of all sorts of different things being created, something called RAD, Rapid Application Development, so you know, an early version, so Agile's an evolution of that. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been around a long, long time. Why is it popular? Um, it, this is almost what you might call the third coming of Agile. <laughs> uh, back in the day, uh, when we used to be using what, what the Agile frameworks are, you know, uh, DSDM for example, Extreme Programming Scrum, back in the day, in the 80s and 90s, they used to be called RAD approaches generically. Um, and they were very, very popular in the 90s, very popular in the 90s. Uh, they fell off a bit towards the end of the 90s uh, with the, you know, the uh, uh, dot-com bubble bursting, etc., etc., etc. At that point, um, the term Agile came around um, and there was sort of like a peak, 2001, 2002. Then it sort of started going down a little bit. And then in 2007, 2008, with the, um, uh, with the economic problems we had on a worldwide basis, People were looking for more effective ways to work to get value out there quick, create competitive advantage, Agile. So really since 2007 and 8, it's sort of like had its third peak. So it's almost like the third coming of Agile now. Um, so you mentioned about Agile being in multi-teams and across disciplines. Um, how important is it that Agile is properly understood within the organisation? It's all about having an individual having that knowledge, but so that the application runs throughout the business for the success of the business, how, how would you...? A absolutely uh, essential. So you've got, to, you've got to make sure, one of the first things, if you're talking about uh, transforming a team or a project or a programme or an organisation, whatever it is, the first thing you've got to get people to understand is uh, what is this thing and why are we doing it? So if you're talking about transformation, transformation equals visualisation. So that means about understanding who the stakeholders are. So you know, who, who are the people who've got the power and the interest within the organisation? Then customising those communication messages to those people. 
So is it essential that everybody knows what this thing is? Everybody involved in relation to the Agile team, then yes, anybody who's a stakeholder of that Agile team, they need to understand. Does that mean they need to do a one-week training course? No. You might be talking about half an hour or an hour to explain to a senior manager not so much what Agile is, the key thing is the understanding of why should they use it. So why should they give it a chance? Why do they need to change behaviour to enable it? It's, 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 it's this sort of thing. Absolutely essential. The team uh, themselves, as you suggested, they do need to be cross-functional. So what that, need, that means is we're about getting value out the door fast. That means you need whatever skills within the team to get across that value chain. That might be analytical skills, design skills, coding skills, testing skills, architecture skills in an information technology context. All those skills need to be in the team so the team can deliver features out to the customer really fast and really effectively. The people around the team need to understand why they need to change to support the team. So it's, it's all about why. Transformation is all about understanding why should we transform. So bringing it back to the book, um, it's about the principles and the frameworks of Agile. Yep. So is that is that the purpose for pulling the book together so you've got yep. a general understanding that you can give out to the wider public? That, that, that's exactly it. I mean, uh, Radtac, the company uh, I work with, uh, we've been working, specialising in Agile for, what, about 18 years now? Uh, me, personally, about 20 years. Now, over that time period, what we hear from people all the time is, OK, yeah, there's these frameworks, which are all fantastic, but how do I know how to put these frameworks together into an agile operating model? So how am I going to pragmatically fix these things together, fit these things together to actually create something that gives me benefit for my business? So we hear that a lot. So what we've done is with BCS, we've actually created an agile foundation book that looks generically at what is agile. So you know what, what is in place that really goes across all the frameworks. What we've then looked at is a number of the frameworks which generally align to that, to that approach. So the Agile framework itself is basically four values and 12 principles defined in 2001 by a number of gurus. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in finding out about Agile generically, not a particular framework slant on it, this is the book to read. And as far as I'm aware, there is no other book on the market that does that. If you're interested in finding out what everything is generically about Agile and what the key frameworks are in 2015, this is the book to read. If you're interested in doing the BCS Foundation certificate, which I would strongly recommend, this book is written to support that certification. So this is the book to read.